It's time for One Take Wednesday. And I know what you're thinking, it's Friday. But, uh, hey, kind of feels like this whole week since Tuesday has just been one long day. So, it's an effective Wednesday. All right, here's a project I've been working on. <clears throat> George Washington did not wear a wig. George Washington powdered his hair white every day. George Washington was a redhead. James Madison enjoyed champagne. Once James Madison held a conversation at a White House dinner party on how many drinks it would take to produce a headache the next day. James Madison was five foot four. Andrew Jackson was gifted a 1,400 pound wheel of cheese. A human, Andrew Jackson was unable to deal with the wheel alone. Andrew Jackson threw a reception for 10,000 people and together, democratically, they conquered the behemoth. Andrew Jackson never ordered from Harry and David again. Zachary Taylor was always ready. Zachary Taylor once defeated an army of 20,000 men with 6,000 men. They say Zachary Taylor could lift 5,000 times his body weight like an ant. Zachary Taylor never quite had his uniform on for battle, but that didn't stop him because Zachary Taylor was the toughest guy in town. Zachary Taylor died from a glass of iced milk. James Buchanan was nearsighted in one eye and farsighted in the other. James Buchanan had trouble focusing at parties and would often close one eye during conversations. James Buchanan could have prevented the Civil War if he had only seen it coming. <coughs> Grover Cleveland was the sheriff of Buffalo, New York. As sheriff, Grover Cleveland earned the nickname the Buffalo Hangman, I assume because he had a knack for the innocent and delightful children's game, Hangman. Grover Cleveland once was Stephen. Stephen Grover Cleveland chose to leave in over Stephen Grover. Stephen Cleveland, even Stephen Cleveland wouldn't dare believe in. Grover Cleveland loved to govern Dover, Cleveland, and all over. Old Steve Cleve just would not leave. And if even he were Stephen, yet by Grover was he known for, would this portly whiskered White House rover do his four-year term once over? Theodore Roosevelt was shot in the chest during a campaign speech. Theodore Roosevelt was fine. Theodore Roosevelt went on to deliver a 90-minute speech with a bullet lodged in his body. And that is the meaning of big stick diplomacy. <coughs> Warren G. Harding died in San Francisco. Warren G. Harding died from heart disease. Warren G. Harding left his heart in San Francisco. Calvin Coolidge loved dad jokes. Calvin Coolidge used to summon the Secret Service and then hide. Calvin Coolidge called sock darning mighty handy. Calvin Coolidge's first name was John, but he dropped it as a young man to differentiate himself from his father. Dwight Eisenhower loved golf. Dwight Eisenhower installed a putting green on the White House lawn. Dwight Eisenhower became enraged when squirrels dug holes in the green, so he called for a total and complete shutdown on all squirrels entering the United States. Eh, too soon. Richard Nixon was a real go-getter. Richard Nixon once broke into the dean's office at Duke Law School to find out his grades before they were posted. Richard Nixon was caught. Richard Nixon later tried this with the DNC. Richard Nixon was caught. <clears throat> Grammy-winning recording artist Bill Clinton won Best Spoken Word Album for Children for his narration of Peter and the Wolf. Two-time Grammy-winning recording artist Bill Clinton won Best Spoken Word Album for his narration of his autobiography. <clears throat> George W. Bush is a passionate painter. George W. Bush paints portraits. George W. Bush paints landscapes. George W. Bush paints nudes of himself. <clears throat> Barack Obama owns Muhammad Ali's boxing gloves. Despite reducing unemployment, expanding LGBTQ rights, appointing the first Latino to the Supreme Court, fostering consistent economic expansion, limiting the, limiting the inherited booming deficit, helping low-income students pay for college, reversing the global gag rule, giving 20 million people access to baseline health insurance, eliminating discrimination from pre-existing conditions, funding education for people with disabilities, and singing Let's Stay Together in front of the American people, Barack Obama had to use these gloves so much during his presidential terms that they broke down and turned into Donald Trump. <clears throat> uh... So that was a sample of a project I've been working on for the past year. Uh, Presidential Daily. First of all, uh, there's a lot of combination audio-visual humor, and if either of those things are not accessible to you, let me know and I'll start compiling these into a more accessible format uh, so everyone can enjoy my subtle humor. <clears throat> 
Second, uh, I don't quite know how to finish this. Um, I've been trying to think of ways to turn Donald Trump into something light, but being disheartened by the direction the country has chosen, I've been struggling uh, for both words and humor. I've been struggling because I cannot ignore and look past the unapologetic hatred that Donald Trump has inspired. And I'm having an extremely hard time uh, feeling compassion for those who were able to look past it. You cannot dispute that Donald Trump's isolationist, Mexican shaming, Muslim banning comments have given a voice to racism, to hateful slurs and hateful comments and hateful crimes. To the Ku Klux Klan, you cannot dispute that Donald Trump's pussy grabbing, body shaming comments have allowed misogyny to continue because the fact that he will hold the highest office in the country inherently rewards bad behavior. We can't escape that because we just proved through our electoral college and burned into our history books that anyone can be hateful and harm minorities and still have power. To the people who say that they disagree with his comments but still voted for him, I can't help but see the hypocrisy in not holding yourself accountable for his actions while forcing all Muslims in and entering the United States to be held accountable for terrorism. And whether or not those bans and registries are implemented, we know Donald Trump played into fear and hatred. And that's harmful. Um, this is beyond political. I started Presidential Daily because I wanted to humanize the presidents. To remind myself and my friends that we are all led by people. But this inspired hatred is not something that I'm willing to humanize. I mean, I'm sure I'll finish this sometime because I'm a completionist, but later. So rather than highlighting the humanity in our new leadership, which I think has faltered, I want to address the leadership in every human. You are a leader. You have the power to speak up for what you believe. And some of us have more power than others. I mean, how much power can you have on immigration rights if you're being deported? We all speak from different experiences and privileges. I can be against racism and misogyny, but how much can I really talk about it as a prime source, having never experienced either one on the street? If I'm going to talk about it, I need to listen first. I can talk about disability. I can talk about a lifetime of going uh, behind buildings just to find an accessible entrance or having to go up one of those loud, crappy 50-year-old lifts that barely qualify as access. Uh, I look at buildings differently than other people. And if that doesn't qualify as uh, experience, you might not understand. I'm out of definitions. Leaders both listen and talk. We all need to listen to the experiences we don't understand. I will listen to Trump supporters. I will listen to the rural white working class experience, which I am sheltered from. But I will not open my heart to racism and misogyny or ableism. So if I hear that, I will talk. I will listen and I will talk. Uh, last thing. We need to stop reacting to reactions. We need to react to problems. All Lives Matter was, an ex was a reaction to Black Lives Matter, which was a reaction to a problem. The war on political correctness was a reaction to the reaction of people hurting, of thinking, hey, uh, maybe my words and actions could trigger my abused friends. Maybe I can think about that. So I know we're in a weird spot. I encourage everyone to abandon the ego-driven contrarianism that reacts to reactions, to use an improviser's mindset and yes and as much as possible, to react to problems, to listen to the other experience, and to talk when you see injustice. <laughs>